Folks, it was a big week for updates on the ongoing solar system shift, the Earth's geomagnetic excursion, and the overall catastrophe cycle of our planet. It has probably been more than a year since we got so many relevant updates in such a short time, so let's go over them now to make sure you didn't miss anything. Up first, we're at Jupiter. They've spotted a massive jet stream in the upper atmosphere, and that is pretty cool, but what they're not telling you is that either Hubble or Juno, the satellite orbiting Jupiter, should have been able to see this before. Its appearance cannot satisfactorily be explained by the previous missions missing it, which means it's most probably new. It's a major addition to the other atmospheric and magnetic field anomalies at the giant planet of our solar system. We got an update on Mars as well, although it's merely a confirmation of previous suspicions. Mars quakes were supposed to have a maximum magnitude, and the mantle was supposed to be dead and inactive. The InSight lander quickly showed that its seismic activity was much higher than expected and that its mantle was in fact alive. Today we get confirmation that it was massive tectonic forces at the Red Planet, which shouldn't have been there under the previous thinking about Mars, allowing us to look back at the data and say that Mars is changing too, in many ways waking up. Again, the changes are seen throughout the solar system, and these were two big updates on Mars and Jupiter. The more critical Earth-focused updates come from the release of the presentation schedule for the AGU fall meeting. One of the most important updates was that what we notice with geomagnetic events like the one we're entering now and which are easily traceable to the last several 12,000-year disaster cycles was also true millions of years ago. The magnetic pole shifts come with volcanoes, sea level variation, and major extinction events. As it was long ago, and as it was in recent cycles, so it shall be again. Devastation in various ways. The other critical update from the release was the data showing how the magnetic field was acting during the Lachamp excursion. The field started as it spends most of its time with the magnetic poles near the geographic polar region, but then... The magnetic field begins to weaken, becomes chaotic with the movement of the magnetic poles, and finally, the magnetic poles reside at the equator with a very weak field, residing at the equator rather than at the polar region. These two stories confirm the critical pragmatic aspects of the ongoing shift that we are seeing today, that the poles are heading to the equator, that we are losing our protection from space energy, and that energy entering the Earth at the peak of the excursion will cause devastation in various ways. We learn more about that through several papers on the atmospheric electricity and global electric circuit changes during space weather. These are not currently in climate models, but the papers that do examine them show a significant impact on clouds, precipitation, storms, and temperature. These will all greatly amplify during the peak of the ongoing geomagnetic event when more of that space weather energy breaks through. And as that space energy has an easier pathway to impact our atmosphere with our protective magnetic field weakening, this helps us understand why major climate shifts are also part of this geomagnetic cyclical event. Technology is, of course, also at risk. In addition to extra radiation, changing climate, volcanoes, and general patterns of extinction, the weakening of Earth's magnetic field makes us incredibly vulnerable to a global EMP blackout from a solar storm. Imagine no food at the store, no water from the tap, no internet, no phone, no heat, no air conditioning, no ATMs or gas pumps. And since it's happened globally, nobody's coming to help. Perhaps the scariest aspect of the cycles will be the last to arrive, the destabilization of the crust and the great tsunamis that follow. The severity and imminence of this event in the coming years makes every single update on any aspect of the cycle important to know, which is why we watch every day and why we made an easy version of the story in our latest book. Eyes open, no fear. We'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.